Rabbi Aaron London and Tina Marcus. Um, and if it's okay, I'll, I'll just read a very short bio from both of you. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So Rabbi Aaron London is a freelance Jewish educator, chaplain, and rabbi living in London. She is the project manager for the Honeycomb Project, a volunteer lay pastoral care training program. She is involved with a number of projects within the UK and the global Jewish community. And Tina Marcus's Tina Marcus. Tina Marcus's work works are called soul selfies. Whereas most people today are taking pictures of themselves with their phones, she is painting snapshots of personal defining moments. Tina's mixed media assemblages are her selfies, focusing on the human figure, documenting historical and spiritual experiences, exploring conditions and circumstances with themes revolving around solitude, aging, ambiguity, and the human spirit. And this was the work that came out of your um, learning of Parshat Pekude. And I turn it to you. Now, Rabbi, do you want to say something first? Sorry, I'm just unmuting. Um, Ellie is making lots of noise. Sorry mm -hmm. about that before. Um, yeah, so Pikude was also a lot of fun to work with. Also feels like decades ago. Um, I don't know how you feel about this, Tina. If you actually remember everything that we spoke about all those months ago. Um, but again, it was, um, you know, it's a somewhat seemingly simple Parsha of uh, describing the things that go into the Mishkan and that go into the tabernacle. Um, but actually when delving deeper, there's there's a lot more into it, uh, in it, as one could, one could say. And um, to me, it was a place of, you know, looking at how can we make such a space that's in, thinking about inclusivity um, and and thinking about it as a full sensory art installation, right? Of that everything we wanted to create this mishkan that was everything that we could hear and we could smell and you can imagine as we're building it. Um, and it's also the place the center part of the community that was a part of everyone and a part of everything. I'd say that everyone brought in their own things um, to to help to help with the building and to to help out in the ways that they were physically possible. And thinking about what can we do in our own spaces, whether that's synagogues, community centers, schools, I don't know, what have you, whatever we might be in charge of or part of, and to see how how much we can help intentionally include as many people um, as possible at any given moment. That is my very shortness. And I'll pass it over to you, Tina, for now. Um, yeah, so so again, um, you know, the Parsha Pekude is the last chapter in Exodus. And really what I'd like to sort of go over is just a brief overview of the Parsha itself, a, re a reflection of my learning experience, and of course the process in making Pekude which I call the records of the tabernacle, the faces of time, which of course is the title of the work. But in terms of an overview, very simple, uh, Pekuti are the tallies and the records of uh, the materials collected for the tabernacle. It talked about the garments, then the furnishings, how the garments were made, the management and the responsibilities of the tabernacle, and of course the texts that were signed by Moses. But the partial mm -hmm. also describes the stages of how the people's donations <clears throat> I guess you can go back to that first. Thank you. Um, how the donations were combined, how they were brought to Moses, and of course, exactly how they, they built it. So in studying the Parsha, I could have focused on any one of those ideas, but really what had stood out for me is that it was one line that basically said, Moses could not have collected nor erected the tent of meeting alone, and that there were very many moving parts. You had the Levites, you had the tradesmen, there were the women to make the garments, and of course the entire community to create the architectural structure, the tabernacle. So really in reflection, it became very obvious to me and compelling that my interpretation for this Parsha was to create some type of a three-dimensional form, which became the faces of time. 
and making of a community, honoring the people who actually helped in the building of creating the tabernacle. And so these spaces of time are really not meant to be realistic in any way, shape or form, but more to capture what might have been discovered artifacts. So also while I was thinking about making this tabernacle, making this piece, I thought about the Hebrew text itself, that it would be a backdrop to these faces of time. And so when you took a look and you read through the Parsha itself, it really talked about all the things that were necessary to make that tabernacle. So in terms of the process, I started lining up the Hebrew text, as you can see behind each one of these faces. And this idea really quickly developed into a vision that this piece would be the backdrop to support the faces of time and to be like a Torah open for all the world to see. But in, in, interesting to note that when I was making this piece, when it was finished, it was 20 inches high, it was 38 inches wide and six inches deep. And then unintentionally, when I look at a, the Torah itself, it's very reminiscent of the same size. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the materials that I used, because I think this is important as part of the process, is that the materials that I chose to make this piece, and especially the faces, were purposeful to have a feeling of being concrete or stone-like. And so I thought about the strong will of the people in order to make the tabernacle, so I thought it would be very befitting to have these faces look like stone. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Um, so the faces are not fully developed. They are as though they would be for artifacts, as though they might have been uncovered from an archaeological site. They are worn, they're pitted, they're, they're fractured, they're undefined. And so the backdrop to the Hebrew writing at the bottom is eroded, perhaps you know, indicative of outside elements wearing away the parchment over many, many years. So just to take a very quick tangent about the lighting of this piece when I was photographing it, depending on how the light source hit the figures, their faces became very multi-dimensional in a way that how the lights uh, and the shadows were cast on the figures, they may have looked older, they might have looked younger, they could have been masculine or feminine. So I thought that was really interesting when it came to you know, looking at the piece itself, um, that they were the faces of time. And so in terms of the overall learning experience and outcome, when I think about it, the three-dimensional sculptural faces these people really are the faces of time that fill and fulfill the tabernacle. Um, and um, Bria, can you go back just to the um, previous slide? Thank you. Um, so what it really represented for me is that all that was necessary to build a home for God, that I, we, all of us, within us, we carry that emotional and physical embodiment, that of being the tabernacle, a mishkan, wherever we go. And that all of us, we are that vessel, okay, that holds and contains that tabernacle within us that fulfills God's will to make this world a home. But I also oh. saw it as that what better place our physical being, that these are the faces of time, the people, us. We are that vessel that fulfills God's will. So the biggest outcome for me in learning with Rabbi London is that one does not necessarily need to have that architectural structure to go to but our bodies are that architectural space. And the, the tabernacle really resides within all of us in our bodily architectural form. And it's where we can fulfill divine purposes and being that tabernacle. So that was my learning experience um, in, in studying the last chapter of Exodus, the Kude. Beautiful. Um... So we have time for one comment, reflection, question um, from anybody. I like that. Uh, I don't see the size, they look small on the screen, but I like the idea that each one looks also a little bit like a mirror of the candle, and I can see myself in each one, like in a mirror. I think it's beautiful. Thank you. We actually have time for more than one comment, <laughs> question, or reflection. Um, yeah. I just want to say that I I really like that the faces aren't completely formed because I can I can really see maybe projecting faces onto these white forms or you know 
maybe you like photoshopping a face and it it is people anybody could be this face through time so i i think that really um um touched me that you that you did that i appreciate that beth thank you and and, and a lot of my work um my pieces are not necessarily dismembered or, or not fi finished um uh, but it's so that somebody else could put their own um projection into it that you know i just don't want to sp be so specific that this is this is what it has to look like i mean it's just that tactile feeling of the emotional um, re um, um response that you get from the piece thank you yeah and they don't really have an expression so you could kind of imagine any expression on them um that that might come to your your mind so mm -hmm. thank you I really love what you were saying about um, the images almost being, or the faces being like from an ar from an archaeological dig. Um, just in terms of a reflection on his like history, who are the people um, that we actually find? Oftentimes, it's just a cup here and there, broken vessels um, from the traces of life, mm -hmm. and here you're unearthing, bringing to life these images, these people, um, both in the ancient period who were involved in the creation of the tabernacle, and then also for this beautiful message of all of us being able to be um, tabernacles um, for God in this, in this world and for the backdrop to be the Torah portion itself. I was wondering just with the edges you didn't you didn't decide to do the full piece of the tour like it's it's cut off at the end if you could just say one word about that um yes so um really the the bottom is meant to be eroded as though perhaps it was sitting someplace like the scrolls themselves and that over time the bottom part might have gotten wet or soaked and then um it, it was just sort of this is what was left you know when somebody found it um Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for making this uh, beautiful piece of work out in the world that every time we read Parshat Pukude, we can go deeper into it with this piece. And with um, your I would, like, mm -hmm. I would like to say one thing before uh, we go to the next artist. Um, again, I know that I've said this before, but I just want to say thank you to the Amen Institute and all the folks that were involved in bringing really this special project work forward. I mean, it was such a richly rewarding experience to be a part of. And of course, especially, you know, witnessing all the other amazing interpretations from the, from the talented artists, along with really the inspiring rabbinic learning experiences. This is just like a one of a kind. Um, and I just say the, um, the, the insight and the concept um, is just absolutely beautiful. And just wanted to say thank you again. Thank you so much. Wow. It's very exciting to be at this point, the culmination of all the works of all the artists and all the rabbis together. It's, it's very heartwarming uh, to be at this moment. Um, thank you.